when discussing evolution and the development of one creature from another, many believe it is a science, but they don't realize that there is a difference between a hypothesis that scientists propose based on various findings and scientific information that is precise and clear. Scientific facts are stable and certain, while hypotheses can change from day to day. Evolution, in its essence, belongs to the realm of hypotheses. The Torah states that God created creatures directly from the dust. It says, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds. God created the living creatures of the earth according to their kinds, and God formed man from the dust of the ground. These verses show that every creature was created in its complete form. As the Talmud says in Tractate Rosh Hashanah, all the works of creation were created in their full form. They were created fully as complete creatures. Adam was created like a 20-year-old man. The lion was created like a lion, not like a small cub. It should be noted that those who get excited about evolution have a problem with God, because those who believe in the Creator are not limited in their abilities. God can create man directly from the dust of the earth. He is not limited. Those who do not believe in the Creator, in order to escape their confusion, when they see complex creatures, invented the concept that it started with a simple organism, something like an amoeba. From that, a more advanced creature developed than a more advanced one until humans were created. But any clear-minded person understands that if you build a whole tower of evolution where one thing develops from another, you still have no answer for the beginning. How did life start? It was the Big Bang. After the Big Bang, everything was still. So how did life begin to appear? Science is something that gives you an explanation for everything, and if you yourself say there is no answer. Even scientists have a video from Stephen Hawking, who says that it is a wonder that we have discovered so much, and still have no answer for how life began. So this whole evolutionary tower is not scientific. Also, the development of animals in the world. Someone who uses logic sees that it cannot be attributed to evolution. According to geologists, who are proponents of evolution, when digging into the ground in deep layers, the deeper the layer, the older the period it belongs to. Therefore, it is impossible to find creatures in the lower layers that appeared later. To the surprise of many, in various places around the world, deep layers have been found with creatures that belong to later periods, but they were actually born before their ancestors, something that doesn't make sense at all. According to their own claims, this spans millions of years, which is not logical to us. For example, a human footprint was found in 1987 in New Mexico in a stone layer estimated to be 250 million years old. So, humans existed in layers beneath the era of the dinosaurs. They even found women's jewelry. What does this mean? Was Grandma the dinosaur wearing jewelry? The facts are clear. They lived alongside dinosaurs. Stephen Gould, a professor of geology at Harvard University, wrote in 1977, the near complete absence of intermediate forms in fossil discoveries continues to be the professional secret of paleontologists. Intermediate forms, meaning, when you see this creature and that creature, where are all the ones in between until this developed into that? There should have been countless intermediate forms. Darwin claimed that one day they would be found. He argued that this no longer matters, and there is no evidence of tree diagrams in fossils. Evolutionary diagrams decorating our textbooks were never observed in rock layers. Professor Havel, Nobel laureate in physics, said, the probability that developed life forms evolved randomly without a planner is comparable to the chance that a tornado or storm in a junkyard would randomly create a Boeing 747. In that case, a bird would say that such a thing came from the storm, said Professor Havel. He's not Jewish, but he says, think logically, you see a complex system, someone planned it. There are many more quotes from scientists that completely refute evolution. Darwin himself wrote in a letter to a friend. To this day, the eye gives me a cold shiver. Darwin feared that the eye alone would negate all of evolution because this creature developed in such a way that it had internal systems that understood light waves, and the system is so complex, it became an automatic camera, capturing light waves, losing colors, forming images and transmitting them to the brain. It is illogical for such a thing to have happened by chance. Many times people have asked me, I believe in a higher power. I have no doubt the world was not created by chance. But how do I know who he is? Who said his name is God? It's a good question. The answer is from creation. We know that there is a higher creator who is not human and not limited by the limitations of humans, but all the details about him are only known from the book he gave to humanity at Mount Sinai. There he gives details about himself, his name, and the process of creation. 
Over time, scientists are gradually trying to discover those details. He explains why he created the world and what his will is for us. When a person accepts humility towards the Creator's Torah, they naturally accept the love of God, the love of Torah, and connect to the commandments with joy, knowing they are walking in the path of truth. These are the manufacturer's instructions, and they are blessed with a good and happy life, both in this world and the next.